All right, how's it going? I'm Aaron Hallett. I write original Christian rock. I just came up with a verse and then a chorus riff. I uh, always grab my guitar, start coming up with a few things, and once I got it, turn on the camera and I start running with it. So I did that. I set a tempo, the usual, if you watch, but I always do this and then I'll like have a drum loop going. That's what I'm going to just used to keep time. I just have a song outline that I just kind of go by, which is verse, chorus, and repeat that three times. I'll add, subtract to that, whatever I want to do, but that's generally what I do. And then I just kind of like go through one pass, feel out how I want the song to flow. And then I'll do a right side, just like two guitar dubs. And then I just keep going. So I just do a lot of improvising and making stuff up on the spot. I'm going to just start tracking got everything queued up. I got a different ish sound than what I've been doing. Every time I get 10, 15 songs, I put it out as an album and then I just like change everything around, save it as a preset and then keep going from there. That way I can have some consistency, but also keep experimenting. So I've just been doing a lot of stuff with tape saturation, continuing to do that. So I like it. It's kind of cool. It just has a really nice warm analog feel to it. Let's do it. Left guitar. I'm going to do some uh, dubs, leads, that sort of thing. Since I changed my sounds around, uh, you just heard the first ones. You'll notice, well, I don't know if you can actually even see this, but I don't have any panning going on here, but I've got Bias FX 2 on, and I have the panning going on in the plugin. So my left guitar is panned left in the plugin, but on the actual uh, mixer console window, it's not. I'm doing it in the plugin because I can just put it on as a stereo plugin and then I can like have it like ping a little reverb to the right side and that way it just sounds a little more natural like it's in the room in theory anyway. Okay, so I've got this clean sound. I think I'm going to do that first. It's a lot more than I usually go with a clean. So I was like, I'm going to just make it nice pretty one because usually i do everything distorted except for like acoustic guitar uh i'm just gonna play some different voicings of the chords and fatten it up so here i go Okay, the cleans are done. I'm gonna do lead stuff. I think I'm just gonna do like an octave run and just kind of like do an alternate rhythm in the chorus because that chorus part sounds pretty bland to me. So. Something like that should add to it a lot. And I might just double that on the right side. I might harmonize it. So like I'm doing G, F sharp, E. I might do like B, A, G. Do the thirds, but if that's too over the top, I'll just double it. So here I go. Now I'm going to do an improvised guitar solo in the third verse. I'm going to track bass now. Just an FYI, I'm doing something that I or something different than I normally do with bass. I usually just send it in to a track, put an amp sim on and call it a day. I actually split the signal now, so I've got the track I'm going to keep on while I'm recording is like the high end stuff with the distortion. I'm choosing that one just because I can hear it, but the bass is going to sound really wimpy until after I record it. Because once I do, I'm going to just take it, duplicate it onto uh, the other track, which is all the low end and then the DI signal. So anything below, I forget what the cutoff was, let's say 200 hertz. It's all DI signal. Anything above is like distorted bass signal. So the high end, it just uh, works really well. I send both of those into a bus, further compress them, put a little saturation on, and it just makes this like nice, super saturated bass sound. But while tracking, it's going to be a little bit wimpy. <laughs> Thank you. 
The bass has been copied, so I'm going to track the drums now. Turn on the metronome. I just deleted the drum loop, so I'm going to sit down there and start tracking. I uh, just finished up the drums. In between recording the drums and standing back here, some strange weirdness happened, and I'm not sure how it happened. It copied the left lead guitar and made a duplicate track and replaced it onto the guitar solo track and shifted all these around. And like, I, I mean, I could have been accidentally pressing something on the keyboard, but I don't know how it would do all of that. And <laughs> it's like, well, I can't like just hit undo because I'm going to erase the drums and I could, I, I don't know. So I, I just like listened back to them, figured out which ones I think they are. The guitar solo is missing in action. Like it's not even in my like files thing at all. Oops. Yeah, there's nothing there. I have no idea what happened. Anyway, I'm going to track a different guitar solo and that's probably the best option. So here I go. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, I like trying to restore my settings here. Um, ugh, weird. On the way from the drum set to the computer within like 0.5 seconds, it copied a track, shifted them down a track, deleted the solo, eliminated it from the files, <laughs> and changed the settings on my... Uh, Guitar solo preset. How in the world does that happen? I couldn't tell you, but it did. So, yeah, um, I'm going to take a little bit, do some, put together some lyrics. I got to check, too. I got someone stopping by in a little bit. They haven't called me yet, but anyway, it's probably going to happen when I'm tracking vocals because <laughs> that's how it works. But I'm going to put some lyrics together. I just talked text to men. I'll be back in five minutes, and then I'm going to start tracking vocals. Okay, I'm finally done. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it as a one track or one take through type thing. That came out decent. Lyrics are done. They're going to be in the description box. You can check those out. The uh, middle of the description box has where you can purchase and stream my music. If you see any of the services you use in the list, you can just go to that service, type my name in their search bar, and you should find me. Simply type Aaron Hallett, the same as the YouTube channel. The very top thing I have is a link that's pastormelissascott.com. That's just there because that's the best Bible teaching I know. Like I said, this is Christian Rock, so I'm just putting a link to that. So I've seen a bunch of other stuff. Most of it's not good. Pretty much all of it's not good. This is actually good teaching. So if you go there, you're going to see teaching of the late Dr. Gene Scott, currently Pastor Scott. There's a whole lot of in-depth study, scriptural analysis, translation from original languages, historical stuff, and 50 years worth of teaching. So it's awesome. They don't add a lot of the traditions and baggage that most churches do because so many places add so many things that they're just doing like a 180, like completely turning around from what the Bible actually says. This is a place where they're just studying. That's it. So if you want to check it out, it's in my description box. That's the idea. My stuff, subscribe, like, comment, share. You'll keep seeing me. Um, I keep writing music, so you'll keep seeing new stuff. I'm going to go to the gym, come back, edit the video, but for you, it's coming right up, so you'll see the finished product. Thanks for watching. Good. I